Now for the moment of truth. I'm going to unplug the work light and put mine in. I hope this works. Right, ready? Please work. Hi, I'm Vicky, the Cardinal's daughter. Welcome back to my auction property renovation project where last week I showed you how I installed this loft ladder. And the week before that, I showed you how I actually plasterboarded this whole area because previously the pipes froze before we moved here, burst, flooded the property. So we had to put that back and we also had to do some extra there. So I've caught you up to date. And the reason why we've been doing a mad rush to get up to here is because we need to put the insulation back. It's winter, we are cold and you can see my breath. <sighs> you could probably see most people's breath in the attic, but we are losing heat. It has got better, but it's not perfect yet. And we've got loads of insulation to roll down. And I can't really see very well to lay it all down in here, apart from with the help of a couple of lights. And these are just basic work lights. I don't want these to be on in here all the time. So that's what I'm gonna sort out today. I have a plan to install some easy attic lights. Now I've seen a couple of videos that inspired me from the DIY guy and Stuart at Proper DIY. I'm not confident enough to tap into any existing cables. To be honest, I can't even see in here to find out where they all go entirely. And I didn't entirely fancy Stuart's way of adding loads of different lights, meaning loads of different wiring, but feel free to go and check out those videos. That might be more for you. But I am gonna take Stuart's idea of having them independently on their own plug. So don't think I'm pitching his idea. I had a word with him before I did this video anyway. So this is my plan. So I'm gonna install three different LED batten lights that are low energy. Instead of the rafters here, I'm gonna fix them across the top. Now, thankfully this is all in easy reach, but I still wanna make it easier for myself. Now, this is just one of the LED lights that I bought as part of some discounts on Black Friday. And instead of actually mounting them to the rafters here, I've got quite a large attic that goes in a few different directions. So I've decided to add some strips of wood there instead. So when I clip them to the back, I can just mount them to the rafters up here. And luckily the clips are adjustable. So I can get the middle one in and move them about. I'll show you how they work. And my husband's six foot, so it's important I go up here, but luckily I won't have to overreach too much. So these ones are six foot long and they come with three brackets. And how they clip on is really simple. Just goes like this and that's it. So it gives me plenty of maneuvering as well so I can get them in place. Now, because the attic goes in a few different directions, we're gonna have one over there, which is past the chimney above the living room because it's so dark, any lights that we've got up here at the moment don't reach over there, so that's important. I've never even set foot over there. We're gonna have one about here, which hopefully also lights up the plumbing over there, any of the, uh, the cabling here, and then another one right at the other end, past the header tank, because this light probably wouldn't be able to reach over there. So hopefully they're bright enough and that's all we need, because they're 7,200 lumens and 60 watts each. But we'll do it in a way that if we do need to add any more, we can. And hopefully with me doing this setup, I've done most of the donkey work for any future electrician to tap into it. Or if I build my confidence, I'm just not ready yet. So you might have seen some Wago connectors. So I'm gonna take this plan downstairs, show you how I'm gonna cut the battens and how I'm gonna connect it together and what wire I'm using. The one thing I am missing up here is a little handrail, but I might deal with that when I'm boarding it up. Bye. <laughs> So you're probably gonna be interested in what cable I'm using. And I've got one and a half millimeter squared twin and earth cable, and it's a solid core, it's not stranded. We've unraveled it and put it round here so it's easier to use up there. Now this is rated up to, I think it was 18 amps. And when I worked it out, each of my lights are a quarter of an amp and I'd need 72 lights to overload it. And this is actually a low smoke one. It is overkill. It's meant to be for fire risk areas. It's just what we had from the previous house that we were at. The electrician must have left it over. So I'm sure you could get something much cheaper, but it would cost us more to go out and buy some new cable. Now this is more than perfect for connecting the three lights that I'm using, but when I dangle a cable down into the hallway, because I'm going to be plugging it into the socket downstairs, this could break over time. So I'm probably gonna have to go out and get a stranded flexi cable. We'll deal with that shortly. Let's get this sorted first. And I'm gonna have some fun with some wire cutters for this. I've treated myself to some Stanley Fatmax ones. 
and I'm going to trim the ends of the conductors and then put a green sleeve over the earth. Now you might be wondering why I've got two, a Stanley Fat Max one and a non-branded one. Well, I found this doesn't actually cut through low smoke cable. Let me show you what happens. It'll probably work now on camera. So if I go like this, it will not work. All it does is damage the sheath. But these work perfectly for the 12 volt electrics that my husband set up on our narrowboat that we've just moved from. So let me show you the Fat Max. Let's hold it there. It's just so much quicker. There's no messing about with that apart from I can't get it off now. Let's just trim those and start again. So in terms of connecting the lights to my cable, I'm gonna be using some Wago connectors. Now there's a few videos on these but they just seem so easy to use. It's like speed fit of plumbing for electrics. So let me show you a close up. All I have to do is push that in and then push that down and it is stuck there. By the way, if you first get these, definitely make sure that you push them all the way back. When I tried to open this first time, I thought I was gonna break it. I'm gonna use one of these Wago connectors that go straight into the neutral, push that down and I'm gonna add another one for the live, the brown cable on there. <laughs> I don't wanna hurt my fingers there. So to connect my cable to the light, all I do is slot the blue neutral cable in there with the other one. So that's connected. Then do the same with the brown to brown. And you'll notice the lighting doesn't have an earth cable, but my cable does. So I'm just gonna put a terminal there to cap it off. This is just to connect a light to a cable if I want to add another light as well because obviously I'm going to add more. At one stage I'll have to use one with three instead of two. So to make sure everything is safe up there I would then put all of those connectors in a Wago lighting box and I'll just slot in the cable on one end and another one at the other end. And once it is in I could then close it and then mount them to the wall with this little screw bit at the back. Now, if you are new to Wago as well, I'll leave a little picture of the instructions that you will find in the lighting box and it'll give you cutting and stripping tips. And at the back of the actual connectors, you'll find a little cutting guide just there of how much you need to strip off your cables. And there's amp ratings on there, but we're not gonna go anywhere near that. Now I've gone for 1.8 meter treated timber. This is the longest length I could get in my mini. I'm cutting them into three equal strips of 60 centimeters on my miter saw. All right, I'll clear my workbench first. So I've got these lined up so I can make a mark of 30 centimeters. And now I'm gonna use my speed square to mark 30 centimeters on each one at the same time. And now I'm gonna mount the brackets to each of the battens. Oh, it's not practical. I'm just marking central of each one where I want to screw my brackets to. I'm pretending I've got a bradle. So I need to mount my strips lengthways. So I've got loads of them. So I'm going to use some drywall screws, which are self tappers. So I don't have to pre drill. I'm going to use my impact driver. Get that roughly even done. On to the next. And by the way, anything I'm using, I'll leave links below if it'll help your future project. Now that's done, I can go upstairs, start positioning where I want my lights to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is position and mount where I want my lights to be. Now, a helping hand, I've got a platform, and a few others scattered around and I'll be moving them as I go. And if you can see over there, there is a gangplank from our old narrowboat. We updated the one on the boat, that's why we've got it. And this actually used to be our narrowboat desk. Anyway, so now I'm going to position this where I want it. I'm just getting an idea of which one I want to attach it to in the middle first. For ease, I'm gonna screw the middle batten first before attaching it to the light and then I can clip the light on and get the others level. <laughs> So it's about there. Okay, it's resting slightly. 
is going to go to that one. Okay, so that's like that. Now that's in, I can attach the others in line. There. Right, I'll put the last one in. Now that's it, I'm going to double up with more screws. Right, so I can take that down, put it back up when I want to. So now I need to go to the other side of the attic to do the next one. So I'll take my light and my three strips. Oh, I need some boards in here. Thank you. Line it up roughly, get it clipped up. Yes, now that is balancing anyway. So I can poke that screw in and that gives me a bit of time to bend down and get my impact driver because I ain't got a tool belt. I think I'll pull the cellophane stuff off while I'm here. It's resisting, I don't want to accidentally pull the lights off. We forgot our demonstration is still attached, but we'll come back. We'll worry about the electric stuff later. So now I've got to venture it to an area I've never been before above the living room. Come and follow me. Safely though, don't put your foot through my new plasterboard. You've got to risk a bit of danger to even put planks down and do any work up here. I do not want to put a foot through my new ceiling. Can't wait till this is boarded out in places. It's just not fun. <laughs> Oh, wow, not been here before. How cute is this? <laughs> and result, yes. So behind me is the conservatory. I can't really see it now because I've got glare. <laughs> yeah, um, fireplace is just there. And now I need to put the last light we're gonna install here. And hopefully it will illuminate the whole area. So like the other ones, I'm putting the middle one in first. But when I offer this up, I want my cable towards you because that's where the rest of the lighting is. What do you think of there? Because then you've got a bit lit up from that area, haven't you? So it's going to be about there, overlapping that. Yeah, that went in. Yeah, right, now we can do something with this. I know that my cable needs to go over there and hooked up to another light. So I've got some Wagos in my pocket. So because I'm only connecting one cable to another cable, I'm going for the two Wago ones. So my neutral is going in there first on its own. I've got another one which is gonna go into the live. By the way, you can trap the edge of your fingers with these. I've been playing with these all night. <laughs> the fun. And when I tug, they do not come out. So now I need to get my twin and earth cable, prep it and attach it to this and add another one to cap off the earth cable. Right, I've got the cable. So now I need to prep the end of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is strip two and a half inches of the sheath off my cable. That was tougher than before. So this has got a little marker at the end and I can score that a little bit with my fingernail. Place it in the cutter. Well actually I'm going to do it all at the same time. There, did it. So before I connect that I'm going to put a piece of earth sleeving over my earth. I'm putting it over the earth done. So because there's no earth on the lighting, I'm going to cap that off now. There. So that ends that. And now I'm going to connect these to the right ones. So now it's as simple as adding brown to brown and blue to blue when I can get it in. <laughs> it doesn't help that this is quite a rigid cable attached to this. Let's just double check they are not coming out. Nope, they're not coming out. And now I can put them in one of these boxes. 
I'll get the cable in first and I'll have to manoeuvre them a bit. That can go like that and that can go in there. Done. So while I'm here and it's quite awkward to go back and forth, I'm going to nail a bit of this cable up and then we'll take the rest of the cable to the other end of the property. So I'm going to nail it underneath here. Before I carry on, I'm just going to quickly mount this box up here. So I'm putting it on the edge of this wood because I can't get my screwdriver in the uh, roof in the way. There. I'll just add that. I'll add one there as well. In fact, no, that can have some give. Right, I'll carry on with the cable clips. Okay, I'm gonna carry on. So I've now nailed the cable up until my middle light. So I'm gonna cut this now and then start wiring from the other end to meet back here where we need a plug. So I'm now preparing my cable to attach to the final light at one end. When stripping the conductors, I don't strip back more than the recommended length because I don't want any copper exposed while they're in the connectors. Now I need an earth sleeve. Just push that in there and just bend that over and I can cut back my five mil on there. So before I take it to the light, that doesn't have an earth, so I'm going to put a terminal on there to cap it off. Now I'm going to take that so the way it goes and connect those together. So blue to blue like before, press that down and brown to brown on the other one. There you go. So we now need to put that in another box. I'll put that one in first and manipulate them. So now I need to mount the box. So I'm screwing the attachment that belongs to it. And that should just clip on. So I'm back near my hatch where we need to connect a plug because that's where our socket is down there. So there's all three cables here for all three lights. Now I'm going to strip this. And the beauty is we don't have to turn all of the electrics off, turn all the lights off because we're only going to put a plug on this and then plug it into our electrics after. So now I'm stripping the one that's going to have a plug but I'm only going to do this one as a test because we know we'll have to update this one later because it needs to be a flexi cable. I just want to make sure it's right and it's Sunday, nearly five o'clock, screw fix, tool station, they are closed. So we'll have to go out tomorrow instead. But I've got to publish my uh, last week's video in a minute. I just want to know this has definitely worked and I'm impatient sometimes. So now I need to add my green sleeves. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit shorter than that. It's annoying you can't buy earth sleeving in little bits at Tool Station or Screw Fix. So I'm connecting all my blues to blues, browns to browns, and earth to earth. Blue to blue, earth to earth. <laughs> it's awkward. So it's all connected, but something that I realised different to my plan is when I got to this point, I realized actually this lighting was much closer to the other cable. So I didn't have to use one of the boxes that I thought I would. So now I've got the challenge of putting those in this box. I'm hoping it's not gonna be awkward because they're obviously bigger than the other ones. I don't want to swear. That's in there, come on. They're not designed to go in there, are they? Don't think this is gonna work. So that didn't fit. I've probably got too many and these five ones are too big. So I have got a junction box just to have a go. These little slots look like they're for the newer ones, which I don't have and those don't fit in it. So I'm just gonna try this way. Let's try 
try and get, come on. They do bigger ones. Oh, I can't, I can't. So it might look close, but it isn't. I'm gonna have to buy a bigger one. I'll deal with that later, the same time as when I replace this cable. So that's covered-ish for now. I will replace it with a bigger one. And when I do, I'll be mounting it to the wood. But because it's a Sunday night and I am impatient, I wanna know if this works. I'm only gonna cut a little bit of cable off to put a plug on and then we can test it in our extension cable. So I'm gonna cut it here. There. There's no point in using a load more and wasting it when we're not even gonna use this in the end anyway. So now it's something I don't do often and that's wiring a plug. Now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna unplug the work light and put mine in. I hope this works. All right, ready? Please work. We have lights! Oh my God, that is awesome. How cool is that? This is so much brighter than I thought it would be as well. Might want one there as well though as a treat, but oh, that is awesome i dance but i don't want to dance on the on a loft floor with no boards yeah <laughs> now i can actually show you what it looks like so my light is up there look those lights are definitely definitely not on this is cool and you can see up there as well i love this and one over there. I, I feel like it could do with one in the middle, but you can see over there. But now it's illuminated enough so I can show you properly for the next projects. So it's now Monday and we've been to Tool Station and Screwfix to get the flex cable that we want to replace the other one for. A bigger Wago box to fit our connectors in and we've decided we want another light. It was easy to do and just over there, it does look a bit dull. And a few of your comments did say, being too bright is definitely not gonna be an issue in an attic. So let's pull the light out. So we know that's not connected to the electrics anymore. And we've got these work lights that I can use. So in a minute, I'll disconnect this wire, but I've gone out and bought a one and a half millimeter flex cable, 10 meters long. So this should be long enough to take it down. I'll leave a link to the things that I'm using, don't forget. Ha, huh, it's a bit tight. I'm not sure this goes in. So it doesn't fit in my wire stripper, so I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way and use a Stanley knife. I'm trying my hardest not to do damage. Right, there, finally. I didn't cut any of that, thank goodness. Okay, I'm twisting those for this. Right, now we're gonna put those in the Wago box. Right, that's all got to come out. <sighs> to disconnect, it's as simple as flipping back the lever, securing the wires from the cable I no longer want, then pushing in the ones from the new flexi cable. Although as these are stranded, I had to twist the copper ends to prevent them from separating while I pushed them into the Wago connector. Right, that's not coming out. That's not coming out, test those. Yeah, that's it. So I now need to mount the box and I'm gonna put it up there out of our head's way. And then when I put the cables in, I'm gonna cable tie it to the wood as well. It's still easy for me to reach as well for maintenance. It also needs to be on this one because this is the closest to the hatch where we can reach it and then take it down to plug in. So I'm now preparing my new cable for the plug socket, which is just here. Uh, it's about 20 minutes later and there. Done. So now that's got the new cable on, we've also put the connectors in the bigger box and that was tricky because they just splay out no matter what cables you put in. So yeah, I definitely didn't enjoy that bit, but it's up there and we've cable tied that to tidy it up. Now I want to stop this trailing by clipping it to this rafter and then we've got an extension cable that we can drop down there when we need it.
So now we've got our beginner's circuit set up, the next thing I want to do is add the final light. Obviously, we'll have to unplug it. But something that you could do is add a socket or a switch by tapping into a permanent live. Now, I'm just going to leave those there. I'm not saying I'm going to do that. That might be the case of somebody else, but yeah, we'll, we'll just leave that there. So now I need to connect that one, snip it somewhere, to up there. I'm trying to work out which one's the best to do it. We're cutting it here, the electrics are off, and I'll have to undo some of this so I can bring it down and strip it. <sighs> this is definitely my favourite part. I just love this tool. So we need some earth sheath on there and the other one. Don't forget we've only got eight wires in this case because we've got three brown, three blue, and two earth. It's not one on this one. So we're going to use a three-paw Wago for the, the blue and the brown, but only a two Wago because this one doesn't have the earth. So the cable was tighter than I wanted it to be, but luckily we had some give over at the other end, so we've just pulled it along. And now I can get them to meet each other. Otherwise I would have had to add another junction box, which is not the end of the world. It's just a bit faffy. So I've got the browns connected there. I'm just going to connect the blues together. So earth goes in. So it's just like I've put the wire back together exactly how it was, but now I've created two extra ports for the light to go in. So we're going to attach the blue into that and the brown. I just need to try and get it in a little box. Right. There, there. We need to add some more cable ties. Now I've got a fourth light. Let's turn these off. Hopefully it still works. <laughs> Please work. Oh, that is perfect. I can see everything now. Four was the sweet spot for here. I love this. And here's how I'll be using it. Once I open the hatch, I can bring down the cable, plug it into the hole, then take it back up when I'm done. But of course, if you would do anything differently, let me know. Maybe you think I should tap into some electrics. Maybe I'm not there yet. But um, I think this was a perfect beginner one, other than just beyond screwing a plug. And uh, oh, I'm just so excited. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe for insulating this loft and other future projects. Thanks for watching. Bye.